The diels alder reaction is an example of a thermal cycloaddition reaction, but not all cycloaddition reactions take place under thermal conditions. Some take place under photochemical conditions, and this is what we're going to focus on in this lecture. Now, one example of a photochemical cycloaddition reaction, a reaction in which light is the energy source, is taking two ethene molecules and combining them to form a cyclobutane. This reaction only takes place in the cycloaddition fashion if light is our energy source. So basically, we take the two ethene molecules, we interact them under light conditions, and we form the cyclobutane in a one-step concerted mechanism in which the transition state is cyclic. This is known as a pericyclic reaction. So cycloaddition reactions are pericyclic reactions. So, in this reaction, we have these two pi bonds of each one of the ethenes breaking. Each one forms a sigma bond. So, we break two pi bonds and we form two sigma bonds. So, we transform the two ethenes, the two pi systems, into a single ring structure, our cyclobutane. And this is known as the cycloaddition reaction. Now, the next question is, why is there a preference? Why does this reaction take place under light conditions, but it does not take place under thermal conditions? So, as always, to answer this question, let's discuss the interaction between the highest occupied molecular orbital of one of these ethene molecules and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the second ethene molecule. So, for this reaction to actually take place in a cycloaddition manner, this reaction, the overlap between HOMO and LUMO, has to take place in a single step. So that means these two sigma bonds have to be made at the same time that these two pi bonds are basically broken. So, let's discuss what our molecular orbitals are of the pi system for our two ethene molecules. So, because these are basically identical, they have the same exact two pi molecular orbital. We have the pi bonding molecular orbital, where these two are blue lobes and these two are green lobes. And we have the pi star, which is the pi anti-bonding molecular orbital, in which this is blue, this this is green and this is green, this is blue. So we have one nodal section between these two and so that's why this is higher in energy than our pi. So the question is which one is the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital, and which one is the LUMO, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital under photochemical conditions. So we basically take our light and we shine that light onto one of our ethene molecules. Let's suppose we shine light onto this ethene molecule. So we have two electrons in our pi bond. So two electrons end up in the lower in energy pi bonding molecular orbital. But when we shine light, if the light carries a frequency that is just the right frequency, our electron, one of the electrons, will transition into the high higher in energy orbital our pi star. This is only true as long as we're under the photochemical conditions. So basically now, this is the highest occupied molecular orbital and this is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So that means in our photochemical cycloaddition of two ethenes, we have to combine the highest occupied molecular orbital of the first ethene, pi star, and pi star of the second ethene molecule. And this reaction, the overlap of orbitals to form our two sigma bonds has to take place in a single step. So let's see that that's actually true. So let's begin with this section here. So we basically take pi star of the first ethene, this is pi star the HOMO, and we take the LUMO of the second ethene. We have pi star and pi star. 
So what do we mean by a single step? A single step uh, basically means that if these two orbitals rotate in one direction and these two also rotate in some direction, when that rotation takes place, we have to form both of these bonds at the same exact time in one step. So let's see that that's actually true. So if these two orbitals rotate together in this direction, so if the bond rotates here and this bond rotates this way, so if this rotates uh, clockwise, if this rotates counterclockwise, then these two blue lobes, the negative sections of the wave functions when they rotate will overlap and that will be a bonding interaction. That will be a good overlap and this bond will be formed. At the same time, when this rotates this way, the green also rotate and they will also overlap to form our bonding, the good overlap. So we see that in this particular case, when our uh, rotation takes place in a single step, in a single step, we form both of these two bonds, sigma bonds, at the same time that these are broken, the two pi bonds are broken. Now let's look at if the rotation takes place in the opposite fashion. So let's suppose instead of going clockwise and counterclockwise, we go counterclockwise and clockwise. So this should not make a difference. So if these rotate this way and these rotate this way, there will be a green overlap here and a blue overlap here. So these greens overlap to form a bonding interaction and these blues will overlap to form a bonding interaction. So in both cases, we form a sigma bond in a single step. These two sigma bonds shown in red in the same exact step. So we see that under photochemical conditions, this reaction takes place uh, via the cycloaddition fashion. Now, what about the thermal condition? Instead of using light as the energy source, let's use heat. So if we don't use light, then this electron is never actually bumped to the pi star. Under thermal conditions, the electron will be left in the pi orbital. So that basically means the HOMO and the LUMO changes for our thermal. Actually, the HOMO changes, the LUMO remains the same. So here, the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital is pi, the LUMO is still pi star. So basically, this remains the same in this case, but this changes from this pi star to this pi. So now we have the blue lobes being atop, the green lobes being in the bottom, and here we still have the blue-green, the green-blue. So now if they rotate this way, if this goes inward and this goes inward, this section here will have a good overlap, it will be blue, but this section will have a blue lobe next to a green lobe, a negative next to a positive sign, and these wave functions will basically cancel out and will have an anti-bonding and no good overlap. So that means only one of these two sigma bonds will actually form in one step. Now the same exact thing can be said about the second type of rotation. If they rotate this way, the bottom, this bottom, will have a good overlap green this will be anti-bonding we'll have green and blue so once again under thermal conditions we see that this reaction does not take place via the cycloaddition in a one-step mechanism we do not form this ring structure in a one-step mechanism we only form one of these bonds and we do not form the other bond but in a photochemical case we see that only the photochemical case will actually allow our reaction to undergo a cycloaddition, a pericyclic reaction in which our mechanism is concerted and we have a cyclical transition state. So we see that some reactions, such as the dealed aldo only takes place via a thermal cycloaddition, while other reactions, like this reaction here, takes place only under photochemical cycloaddition.